Welcome to Evergreen Community Children's Church. I just want to thank you all for joining me here this morning, and I want to remind you that wherever you are, whenever you're watching, you are at church. So the first thing you do when you come to church is what? We pray. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we want to come before you and thank you and praise you that you are with us, that you are taking care of us, and that you are watching over us. We pray, Lord, that today as we look into your word, that we will see and understand many things, especially today when we talk about praising you and honoring you and giving you glory. We ask, Lord, that you would be together with us as we learn about these things and that you would be together with us as we try to do these things. We ask, Lord, that you would help us to give you all of that worship that you truly, truly deserve. And we lift up all of these things and praise you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so we're going to go straight into today's message. And today's message is entitled Praise the King. And it is from Mark chapter 1, verses 1 through 10. We're also going to be looking at a couple of the other verses uh, from uh, one of the, uh, from, from Luke that tells the same story. Uh, so let me read uh, the passage right now. So Mark chapter 11, verses 1 through 10. And now hear the word of God. Okay. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, uh, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, Why you are you doing this? Tell them, The Lord needs it, and will send it back here shortly. They went and found a colt outside on the street, tied to a doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, What are you doing, untying that colt? They answered as Jesus had told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their, their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut uh, in the fields. Uh, those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest. Amen. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> I'm all snorty right now. Um, we're going to go through the, uh, the slides and we're going to talk about uh, this story. And uh, we're going to talk about a few things um, that I want us to remember from this story. So uh, this, this story starts out with Jesus... Um, and, uh, you know, with the Feast of Passover approaching, he's heading towards Jerusalem. And uh, he knows uh, that it's going to be uh, just a, another week that he's going to be able to spend with the disciples before he is, uh, you know, before he, he dies on the cross. So uh, as the Feast of Passover was approaching, Jesus led his disciples uh, toward Jerusalem. Okay? And just before they get to the point uh, where they get to Bethphage and Bethany on the Mount of Olives, uh, Jesus uh, takes two of his disciples, we don't know who, but he asks two of his disciples uh, to go to the village uh, just there, either to Bethphage or to Bethany, and uh, look for a colt, the foal of a donkey. So it's, uh, uh, it's, it's uh, you know, a baby donkey, right? And uh, that... that um, well, not exactly baby, a little bit bigger, right? A young donkey, and it'll be tied up to uh, in, in the street, and no one has ever ridden it before. And he tells them uh, to bring that back to me. And uh, he asks, he lets them know that if anyone asks them what they're doing with this, because like, I mean, you know, uh, people might think they're stealing it, they, they're supposed to say that uh, Jesus needs it, that the Lord needs it, and that he will return it. And so the two disciples, they went off and they found exactly, uh, they found the donkey exactly as Jesus told them, uh, tied outside on the street uh, to a doorway. And as they started to untie it, uh, the colt's owners came out and they're like, what are you doing? Why are you taking the colt? Right? And then the two disciples, they turned to them and said, the Lord needs it and we'll send it back here shortly. And then when they said that, the owners let them take the donkey. Okay. And then as soon as they brought the, the donkey, the colt, back to Jesus, uh, they put their cloaks on top of it, and Jesus sat on it, and they started riding towards Jerusalem. Okay. And then people started showing up. 
people started uh, showing up and uh, walking together with Jesus, and they spread their cloaks on the ground for Jesus' uh, uh, colt to walk over, and they uh, brought palm leaves, and they put those on the ground too, or they waved them in the air, and they started praising Jesus. Okay? Uh, and so as they, uh, as they started doing that, um, people ran ahead, and uh, they were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David. Uh, Hosanna, you know, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And if you guys remember, um, my, one of my favorite words in the Bible is this word, Hosanna, which means, oh, save, right? And so uh, that's what the people were doing. And people were, you know, even more people started to, uh, to show up and they started shouting, Hosanna in the highest heaven. And then uh, it doesn't say in Mark, but in Luke chapter 19, uh, verses 39 and 40, the Pharisees, some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, and they were in the crowd and they were following along. Uh, they, they came up to Jesus and he said, teacher, uh, you need to tell these people to stop shouting and stop saying these things. And then Jesus, he um, he turns to them, he says, I tell you, uh, verse 20, uh, Luke chapter 19, verse 20 says, I tell you, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. And uh, that's, you know, that's the end of our story. It's an interesting story. And it's, uh, uh, it's, it's the story of Palm Sunday. And Palm Sunday is in a few weeks. And one week after that will be Easter. But we're going to go over the, this story today because I want us to uh, think about praising God and giving Him all of the glory and all of the praise and all of the honor. And what can we learn from this story? It's a very short story, right? The way, wrote, the way I read it and the way we went through it, it's pretty short. Um, so we're going to talk about a few things. So the first thing we're going to talk about is uh, the triumph, okay? And so uh, Jesus rode into uh, the city on a donkey. And in the Bible, in the Bible, uh, when you, if you look it up in the Bible, it says Mark chapter 11, um, in the first 10 verses, there's a title right there. And it says, The Triumphal Entry. The Triumphal Entry. And the triumph is, uh, th that, that word is very specific to um, to this culture, well, to, to during this time, that word mean, that word means something. That word means uh, something very, very specific. Okay, and so if you were to go to a Roman, okay, uh, if you were to go to a Roman at that time and told them uh, that Jesus walked into that Jesus rode a donkey into Jerusalem on his triumph, the Roman would have laughed. Because the Roman had a very specific idea of what a triumph is. Okay? If you learn about a triumph, and, and I've been, during this time, I've been doing a lot of reading uh, and watching videos and other things, and I, I, uh, um, I knew about this, uh, but I didn't know how much uh, the triumph, how important the triumph was uh, to the Roman culture. And the Roman culture is based on, uh, um, you know, uh, you know, being uh, like if you were uh, the, the, the ideal Roman man uh, is somebody who speaks well, who fights well, and who leads well. Okay? And so what that means is that uh, uh, the politicians in Rome would also have, be given the, uh, the, authority to, uh, excuse me, the authority to lead an army. So it would be like the president actually getting up and going out in front of the army and leading the army. Uh, and so that's, that's what the Romans did. And so uh, what, what you realize, well, what, what you find out when you read about this is that the triumph in Rome is um, very interesting. It's a very specific kind of honor given to a general. And you have to, there's a, there's a list of uh, qualifications to get a triumph. So the, the, the general has to uh, lead, the, uh, lead an army, and the army has to uh, give uh, the general imperium. Okay, and imperium means uh, uh, that, the, that he has authority. So the, uh, the, the army has to submit to the general, number one. So if the general can't lead his own army, he can't get a triumph. And the second one is, uh, uh, is that they have to conquer land, so that they have to get new land for Rome. 
right? So they need to go to a different place and they have to conquer everybody over there and then annex their land and that, that becomes part of Rome. And so when you get new land and treasure and defeat uh, an, an enemy king, that's the second part of a triumph. And then uh, when, the, you know, when all those things happen, uh, the, the, the general can go to the Senate in Rome and say, hey, uh, these things happened, would you give me a triumph? And usually uh, the, the senators will vote to give him a triumph. And uh, it's a very special thing because according to Roman law, uh, the general, if you're, if you're a general or if you're a governor of a different uh, province in Rome, you're not allowed to come back to Rome as a general or as a governor, okay? And uh, what that means is that you can't bring your army into the city. So if you, the, the, the city was like a place where you can't bring your army. Now, people did do that, and it's wrong. Um, but, that's, that's the, but the only time that you're allowed to do that legally, according to the Romans, is during a triumph. That means you can come in as a general uh, and bring all your army, and then you have this huge parade, and then you show off uh, all the victories that you had. Okay? And uh, you can't have a triumph unless you do those things. And so if you told a Roman what Jesus did, they'd laugh. They'd be like, where is his army? There's no army. Where is, where is his victory? No victory. There, where is the treasure that he got? No treasure. And so this is very different. This is very different than what somebody else would call a triumph. And so this triumphal entry that we talk about in the Bible is different than anything else. And so that's our first clue about praise. That's our first clue about worship. It is done differently than anything else in the whole world. Our worship, the way that we worship, the way that we give glory to God is different than what uh, than, than the way that we give glory to a person. It's different than the way that we give glory to a person who was a general in an army. And so uh, this whole thing culturally is very different than what uh, the Romans did or other cultures, other, uh, other, other nations in, in the area. They had something similar to that where the king or where the general would march into the city with his entire army and he would show off the... the the, the conquest that he did, right? And then people would give him praise. They'd be like, oh, this guy's awesome, right? And it's really important in Rome because this is one of the ways that somebody makes a name for themselves. And then when, uh, when they do that kind of stuff, they're able to, um, you know, they, uh, people know who they are and so they get elected to uh, bigger offices. And so that's kind of one of the things that, um, that the Romans did. That's what, that's the, actually, that's the culture uh, during that time. Because if you, if, you, uh, if you want more, you have to show that you, can, you earn it and that you deserve it. And here, what Jesus did is totally different. It's totally different. And we know that Jesus deserves a triumph because he's God. But those people, they, they didn't exactly know that. Okay. And the people who um, wave the, the palm trees, the palm, uh, the palm uh, leaves, and put their clothes on the ground, um, they, some of them might have known who Jesus was or what his mission was, um, but I don't think they all knew exactly. They have a little bit of an idea, but they still praised God. They still honored God. They still honored Jesus. And this interesting entry into Jerusalem. This is how Jesus started the last week of his life. Jesus, this is how Jesus uh, showed the people around him and us that he is God, that he deserves all the praise, that he deserves more than anybody else just because of who he is and what he will do in our lives. Okay? So people when we look for triumph. So this first point is all about um, how we look at uh, triumph or how we look at uh, uh, being deserving of praise. But Jesus, by his very nature, deserves to be praised. He's trying to, he's showing us that. He's teaching us that. Okay. And so the second part is, well, we want to praise God. We want to praise, uh, you know, we want to give glory to Jesus. And one of the things that uh, we have to remember is that we have to praise God the right way. 
Okay? So how do we praise God the right way? Well, we have to do it the way that he wants. We have to do the things that are scriptural. So what, is, what does the Bible say about this, right? So the people, they shouted, Hosanna, right? And they shouted, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming of the kingdom of our father David. Okay? And all of those things are straight from the Bible. So we have to use the correct words to praise God. We have to use the correct, uh, we have to have the right attitude to praise God. And we have to do the right things to, to, uh, to give praise to God. Now we can't just praise God by doing whatever we want. We can't just praise God by using whatever words because those are not the way that he wants us to praise him. Now, if you think about it that way, you were like, oh man, that's kind of, that, that, I don't feel free. I don't feel right. I don't feel good when I do that. But that's not the right way to think about this, right? We need to praise God in the right way. Not the way that uh, somebody might think that we should praise God, but we should praise God in the way that God wants to be praised. Okay? And we know, that the, we know the way that God wants to be praised because it says so in the Bible. It says to uh, the words that we need to use, how we need to praise, and, and what we need to do. And the, the people who were doing this uh, in this triumphal entry of Jesus, they were doing it correctly. They were giving Jesus all of the honors that a king deserved, and that's and that's what uh, you know. That's what Jesus is. He is the king. He's the conquering king. He's the one that rules over the whole earth and who conquers sin. And that's what he's going to show us in this coming week. In this coming week that he's going to spend in Jerusalem before he dies. And so we, the second point, we need to realize that we must praise God in the right way. Okay? So not only do we praise God differently from anything else that, uh, in the whole world, right? the triumph is, uh, is, is what people do. We, we do, you know, they, they, they're like, wow, this, is, you know, this person earned a triumph and, and, and deserves this praise. Jesus, by his very nature, deserves this praise. And we need to praise him the right way. And we do it, when we do it the right way, uh, God blesses us. And it's interesting because when, when we are um, right with God and when we are doing the things that are correct before him, then God helps us to, uh, you know, God, the, way that, the way that it shows that, well, we'll, we'll see that in, in our memory verse, but the way that it shows that is we are pleased to praise God, we uh, we become um, uh, we become uh, even closer to God when we praise Him. Okay, and it, we don't just do it by ourselves; we do it in a community. Right? God not only brings us closer to Him when we praise Him, when we do it the right way, but He does it you know, when we do it the right way. He brings us closer to each other. Right. So like when we praise God the right way, when, when God is with us and when God is working inside all of our lives, we become closer together. We experience something that's bigger than us. We experience something that is more powerful than us. More than we put into it, we get out of it. That's what correct praise does. Doing, doing praising, uh, <laughs> praising God the right way gives us the ability to come closer together and have a power that's bigger than what we can get by ourselves. And so that's our second point. God gives us supernatural power when we praise him in the right way. All right. And then we're going to look at this last part. This last, uh, uh, this last point is that praising God is inevitable, right? It's not like, uh, it's not like, you know, um, Avengers Endgame, uh, uh, Thanos saying, I am inevitable, right? Uh, but uh, Jesus is saying, I am inevitable. Praising God is inevitable. And when we read uh, from uh, Luke chapter 19 about the Pharisees saying, hey, Jesus, you got to stop them from, you got to stop your guys from, um, you know, uh, from, from shouting and praising. This is, this is not the right way to do it. And Jesus is saying, you know what? If I tell them to be quiet, the stones will shout out, right? Verse, uh, verse 39 and 40 says, Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. They were too loud. They were, doing, they were too unruly. And Jesus says, I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. Jesus is saying, 
that uh, praising God, our praising God, is inevitable. And if we do not participate in praising God, somebody else will. And if nobody praises God, the stones themselves will cry out praise to God. Okay? Jesus is saying that when we, you know, that, that because of who he is and because of who God is, uh, the whole of creation, everything that God made, will praise him. Okay? It is bigger than us. It is bigger than anything that, that, that we can imagine. And we get to participate in that, right? And when um, I, I, I do have to say that when we get a chance to, uh, to worship God in the right way, in a good way, in, in a way that honors Him, it is more powerful, more amazing than we can imagine by ourselves. It is bigger than what we put into it. So I said that before, that we get more power out of it than what we put into it. So when we shout our praises to God, uh, we get more than than the shout that we than than you know than the shout that we put into it. We get something amazing, something powerful, something great. Praising God is inevitable. All of creation will praise God. We have the opportunity to praise together with them. But if we choose not to, then it's still going to happen. It doesn't depend on us. So we look at those three points, right? That the triumph, the whole world looks at a certain thing, but God does not look the same way at that same thing. Triumph, the, the victory that we think about is different than the victory that God thinks about. And that second one, we need to praise God the right way, using the words that he has given to us. Scriptural words. When God tells us to sing, we should sing. When God tells us to lift our hands, we should lift our hands. Okay? When God tells us to shout out, we should shout out. You can't use swears to praise God. You can't use anything vulgar to praise God. You can only use the things that he asks us to use. And so people are thinking, well, you know, maybe there's like, you know, the, uh, different musical genres that you can only praise God in. That, I don't think that's the case. I think the case is using the correct words, using the, the, the things that he asks us to do, uh, to use to praise him. And when we do those right things, God does bless us. Okay. And uh, we're going to talk about today's memory verse. It says, praise the Lord. How good it is to sing praises to our God. How pleasant and fitting to praise Him. Psalm 147.1. Let me read that again. Praise the Lord. How good it is to sing praises to our God. How pleasant and fitting to praise Him. Psalm 147 verse 1. And here it is. Right? We're using God's words. We're singing praises to Him. And when we do it the right way, it is pleasant and right and fitting to praise Him. When we praise God, uh, God gives us this chance to enter into this amazing, wonderful, powerful relationship with Him. And not just with Him, with all of us, right? Because like, we don't just praise Him by ourselves, we praise Him together. And when God lets us do that, God brings us closer together and we become something that no one person is, uh, is able to do by themselves. Let's pray and um, we're going to say goodbye right after this, okay? So let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you again for how much you love us and take care of us. We praise your name because you deserve to be praised. We honor you and worship you because there's nobody in the whole world like you. And we know that you are, are concerned about our welfare, that you look at our lives, and that you're, you want to be part of the things that we do. And we praise you for that. We praise you because you're the God of the whole universe, and yet you still love little us, tiny us, insignificant us. And so we come before you and give you all of the honor all of the glory. We praise you with our words. We praise you with our songs. We praise you with our bodies. And we praise you with our actions. 
And we ask, Lord, that you would help us to do the right actions to praise you. Not only singing and praising and raising hands, but also speaking truth to one another, loving one another, caring for one another, and honoring one another, just as you want us to do. And as we do those things, help us to do them in praise to you. We lift up these things and praise you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So it's time to say goodbye again. Say goodbye. And I just want to remind you that I do love all of you. I miss you. I'm praying for you every day. And very soon we're going to be able to see one another. All right. And, and have our, our, our praise and worship together. So let's, uh, let's look forward to that time. All right. Goodbye.